labor demand. When we say labor demand, we are looking at the labor market from a firm's perspective. In this chapter, we will divide the discussion into two major categories, the short run and the long run production process. For you to appreciate and to understand better the discussion in this chapter, let's position ourselves as a firm owner. We own a firm and we are interested to know the economic rules, economic theories or principles that can guide a firm's owner decision to hire workers. We will assume that our firm is operating in a competitive product market. Recall the idea of a perfectly competitive market where firm is a price taker. And we will also assume that our firm is also competing in a competitive labor market. In short, we are competing with many other firms to hire workers. We want to demand for their skills and knowledge. So that's some assumptions that we make before we proceed further to some basic production function discussion. So this is the production function for our firm. Q is quantity of output produced is a function of E for employment or workers and K is for capital. So in the case of a short run production process, we will assume that capital is constant, but in the long run, we will assume that both inputs are variable inputs. We will assume also that in the case we are hiring 10 workers for an eight hours, this is equivalent to hiring 20 workers for a four hour shift. So this is to show that each worker's productivity are basically the same by hour and also by the number of workers. We will also assume that though there are different types of workers, they are all the same. I have mentioned to you that we will start the discussion by looking at the short run production process. And here we will assume that our plant, our machines are considered as fixed input while variable inputs. So there's a mistake here. This should be variable inputs. So workers, raw materials are some other examples of the variable inputs. On the other hand, in the case of a long run, all inputs, including the factory, the plant and the machines are all variable inputs. And in both cases, the short run and in the long run, we will assume that this is a competitive labor market where firms will enter and exit the market. And this is also the assumption we make about the product market where it is a competitive product market. Therefore, again, firms will enter and exit the market freely. So let's first go in details about the short run production process. So here are some basic formula that I hope you still remember you have learned in your microeconomics class. You need to know what do you mean by total product, marginal product and average product. Let's look at this table just to derive some basic ideas about the production of our firm here. So in the first column, we have number of workers employed and recall that in our production function, workers are the only variable input that we have. We will start from zero worker up until 10 workers. In the second column, we will have the number of output produced given the number of workers employed starting from zero output when we hire zero workers and the number here shows the total output or total product, total output or total product. The third column is the marginal product. And there are some interesting observation that you need to realize here where in this range, this is where we have what we call and increasing marginal returns. 
as we hire an additional unit of worker, the number of outputs produced is increasing. However, from this amount onward, it shows a diminishing marginal returns. So this situation happens in the short run. Over here, we have the information about our average product. Sometimes average product is used as a simple measure of productivity because it shows the output produced per worker. So it's a quick measure of workers' productivity. The next column is a column that gives us the value of marginal product. This is a new concept that I believe many of you will learn in this chapter. And this information gives us the value of marginal product of worker. So the notation here is value of marginal product of worker. So this should be a subscript E. What is the value of marginal product of worker? It tells us about the additional dollar of revenue the firm earn for each additional unit of worker employed, holding capital constant because this is in the short run. So notice that there is also a connection between the value of marginal product and the law of diminishing return where the value of marginal product of worker would first increase in this area and then the value starts to decrease as we hire more and more worker and the last column is the value of average product of worker so this is the value of average product of worker and this should be a subscript e before i go further note that down here it tells us that the calculation for the value of marginal product and the value of average product is based on the assumption that the price of the output is equal to two dollar if we look at the formula to calculate the value of marginal product of worker it is given by this formula this one this is the formula that we use to compute the value of marginal product of worker it is equal to marginal revenue times the marginal product of worker value of marginal product of worker is given by marginal revenue times marginal product of worker however over here we write the formula like this simply because earlier we make the assumption that our firm operates in a competitive product market so in a competitive product market marginal revenue is equal to price given by the market remember the firm is a price taker therefore we are replacing marginal revenue with p here so this formula is only applicable in a context of a firm operating in a competitive product market so here we say that the value of marginal product of worker is equal to price times the marginal product of worker with that formula in mind let's go back to the table just now therefore knowing the price of the product that is equal to two dollar we can derive the value of marginal product of worker by price two dollar times the marginal product of worker 2 times 11 equal to 22 2 times 16 equal to 32 and so on so this is how we derive the value of marginal product of worker over here we derive the value of average product of worker and it is given by this one gives us this formula gives us the value of average product of worker price times average product of worker again price here we can use price over here because we assume that our firm is operating in a competitive product market therefore marginal revenue is equal to price if it is not operating in a competitive product market you need to 
use marginal revenue instead of price over here. With that formula, we also can calculate the value of average product of worker. So with that information or data available to us, we can plot the following curves. So this is the total product curve because this is a short run production process. For us to have more and more products produced, we need to keep increasing the number of workers. But this cannot go indefinitely because there is a segment of this total product curve where the curve is very steep and then it starts to becoming flatter and flatter. And that is due to the law of diminishing returns. Over here is again a familiar curve to all of you. We have here our marginal product curve and also the average product curve. I have explained to you the formula on the value of marginal product of worker as well as the formula for the value of average product of worker. This is how we explain our profit function or the equation for our profit. Profit is equal to price times quantity minus W for wage times number of workers E. So this is the cost of hiring workers to the firm minus the cost of capital. R is the price for capital and K is the capital. Therefore, this gives us our profit equation. From the formula on value of marginal product of worker and also value of average product of worker and the information that we get from our table, we can also plot the curves for the two variables here. Value of average product of worker, value of average product of worker, and also the value of marginal product of worker. Notice that the shape of both curves are similar to the shape of average product of worker in the case of value of average product of worker and the shape of marginal product of worker in the case of a value of marginal product of worker. The only difference here is when we derive, for example, the value of marginal product of worker, this is the augmentation of the marginal product of worker times price. All right. It's just with times with price. The same for average product of worker. Let's go to this curve. This is our marginal product of worker. I can draw the value of marginal product of worker simply by taking this curve, marginal product of worker, times price by $2. Since price is $2, so whatever value you have along the marginal product of worker times 2, that will give you this new curve. And this new curve, we call it as the value of marginal product of worker. So this is just the augmentation of the marginal product of worker times price level. And the same in the context of the average product. If we want to derive the value of average product of worker, it is just take the average product times the price level. I don't want to mess up this diagram. I hope you get the idea. We have derived the value of marginal product of worker and this is the formula. The value of marginal product of worker measures the dollar increase in revenue generated by an additional number of worker holding capital constant. And I have emphasized earlier that value of marginal product of worker is the blown up or augmentation figure of the marginal product of worker. And then we also have discussed about the value of average product of worker given by this formula, price times average product of worker, and it measures the dollar value of output per worker. That's all for this session. Thank you very much.